This week, the UFC is in Lincoln, Nebraska for the very first time. That's right, the capital of the Cornhusker State. And the main event is a lightweight contest that looks to be all action. Justin Gaethje taking on James Vick in a fight that should be very, very fun for the fans, but also has some real things at stake for the two guys in the main event. Starting with Justin Gaethje, who of course has proven himself an absolute warrior. He is entertaining every single time he steps into the cage. You know, anytime he's in there, it could be a fight of the year candidate. But He's still chasing after championship gold. He wants to prove that he is still a relevant contender in this lightweight division. The last two fights, I can't, you know, can't harp on it enough. I was right there. I had them both hurt. I had them both on the ropes. Um, you know, I just became complacent in my position. It's going to be a big challenge for me. I got to go out there. I got to get a W. Uh, be a little bit more patient than normal. Pick my shots. Uh, he doesn't like to get hit. He, he gets hit going backwards, and that's the worst way to get hit. So when I do touch him, he's going to, he's going to feel it. He's going to. Not like it. Meanwhile, James Vick has built an incredible record in the UFC's lightweight division, but hasn't been getting the attention that he thinks he deserves along the way. This is his opportunity that he's been begging for, a main event against a relevant opponent. And he's not buying into the hype that Justin Gaethje has been spewing, that he's not ready for this test. I wouldn't name one fight that I've given up in. Even the fight that I got lost, I lost to Benil Darius. I went out like a warrior. I got knocked the out, but I, I didn't give up and I didn't quit. You know what I'm saying? My body wouldn't function anymore, but I kept fighting, you know? Name one fight I've given up on. There ain't no, he's delusional. Everybody in the top echelon of the UFC has heart. All of us have heart. Why do you think we're here? So he's making a, a serious mistake if he believes that. He's also making a serious mistake if he thinks that I'm not ready for that war. So again, a potential fight of the night in the main event, but one that means a lot for the two guys that are in it as well. Now, what else matters on this card? Well, the co-main event is very relevant in the featherweight division. You've got Michael Johnson taking on Andre Feely in another fight that on paper looks like should be a heck of a lot of fun. But it's also a very meaningful fight for each of the night's competitors as well. Starting with Michael Johnson, his second fight in the featherweight division, he dropped down at lightweight. He has faced some of the best in the world in both of those divisions but he hasn't always gotten the results that he wanted. Now he believes that a change in his mental focus is going to fix the issues that he's had in the past. This training camp, you know, I've been really focusing just me, you know, taking my time, really focusing on what I need to do. And, um, you know, just speaking everything in existence. You know, I know how great I am. You know, I know I'm better than these guys I'm fighting. I know I'm better than these guys I'm losing to. I just need to stay focused for 15 minutes, 25 minutes, whatever it is. and. Um, Get back on the winning track, because uh, I really miss that feeling. Meanwhile, on the other side of the cage, you have Andre Feely, a guy that has had incredible moments inside the cage, but has struggled to get consistent results. He believes now he's ready to do exactly that, no longer having that prospect tag on him, but ready to put together a real win streak in the USC's featherweight division. I know that if I focus on what I need to do, like I can beat anyone, beat anyone in the world. Like I'm the best 145 pound fighter in the world. Like I've already fought the current champ. Like if you go back and watch that fight, you'll see how close it was. You know, like I don't, I don't worry about too much of what he's bringing. I know he's dangerous. Like I know he's dangerous. He he's beating guys like Dustin Poirier. That, that speaks for itself. So I know what he's gonna try to do. I know he's fast. I know he's athletic. I know he's aggressive in the first. Like he's a bad motherfucker, but I'm badder. Like I'm the baddest motherfucker. So. All right, so two very meaningful and two very intriguing fights atop this card, but who else made my list? Well, there's a lot of fantastic fights on here, but one that I'm really looking forward to, Tim Williams versus Eric Anders. Tim Williams, a guy you might not have heard of before, but he was a two-time cast member in The Ultimate Fighter. It didn't work out for him there. He got a USC debut earlier this year. Didn't work out for him there either, but now he's back and he's facing Eric Anders, a real legitimate prospect in the middleweight division. So what does Tim Williams change this time around? Well, he's taking a four-week break from his full-time job that he's balancing while he's chasing his USC dream. He believes that that commitment this time around will allow him to taste success in the USC Octagon for the first time. Last fight, I had like a week and a half uh, before the fight and the last, you know, that last week is nothing. So I was a lot of, I was working a lot my last camp. This time I took off four weeks before the fight and I just got a ton of reps in, a lot of, uh, you know, yoga. I had plenty of time for everything. So uh, mentally and physically, like I've never had this much time to prepare and do it right. Everything went really well at this camp, so yeah, I think you're gonna see a different uh, me this time for sure. Have to respect the hustle of a man like that chasing his USC dream, but what other names should you be paying attention to? Well. In the flyweight division, one I'm really looking forward to is Davison Figueroa versus John Morago. Now, Figueroa is an undefeated flyweight who's quietly put together a 3 0 mark in the USC's flyweight division. I think he's somebody that you really need to pay attention to, but he's got a very, very stiff test here in John Morago. So I'm anxious to see how that fight plays out. I'm also anxious to see Mickey Gall. A lot of hype behind Gall when he came into the USC, of course, coming off the Dana Whites looking for a fight series. Tasted defeat for the first time his last time out. That was way back in November. And he said, listen, I've made a lot of sacrifices and a lot of changes since then. I am still a legitimate prospect in this division. He takes on George Sullivan in a fight that's way down on the FS2 prelims, but I think has some real meaning to Gall's career moving forward. I think he's somebody to still keep an eye on as he develops in the UFC. I want to put a highlight on. I want to, I want to do something that, you know, I want to, it's my, this is my art.
you know? I want to paint, I want to paint something beautiful. I want to paint some beautiful violin art. I want to have something that, you know, that'll last, something that I can like, I want to crush it. I want to, I want to, you know, I want to put a violin masterpiece on. So there you have it this week in Lincoln, Nebraska. Maybe a little bit short on the biggest superstars in the sport, but I think a lot of meaningful and potentially very fun fights on Saturday night on FS1, FS2, and UFC Fight Pass. Of course, you keep it on MMA Junkie. We'll have everything covered from right here on the ground in the Cornhusker State.